So we I showed you how we did the initial for, uh, study, then the, the concepts, the 3D model. And here I will show you now the whole process, how we build it. So let me go full screen. So I showed the students various types of materials. Uh, on the left side, that is particle board, MDF. On the right side, these are different thicknesses of plywood. They also have various costs. There's a closer look to it. Now, one of the most important tools is you need to have a really good precise clean cutting table saw. So you see here that I put the the big sheet onto the the table saw. I lined it up with the rib fence and I want to just trim this one edge with the blade just a little bit. And in this stage now the board is cut. I flipped it and I moved the, the rib fence right to 15 inches. I do not do any markings actually on this board because I can use Shaper while uh, working on the machine and sample dimensions right from the board, which is another really great thing about Shaper because you can work mobile inside a wood shop or any other place. There you see how I'm cutting uh, a 15 inch long slot. I want to make four um, boards. They're 15 by 15. So the, the rip uh, fence on the right, I don't move, I leave it. But I will use now the minor guard with a 90 degree angle and do a clean cut just along that edge again. I verify. Did I do a good cut? So my, my two cuts are the 90 degree, they are. See now, I will uh, pass this board three times through it so that then I have all my four uh, 15 by 15 inch uh, boards. Very good. Now to do the miter cut you see that I rotated the blade 45 degrees. The board is 0.7 inches thick. The upper surface is actually the inside. The lower surface is the outside of the board. So I need to move the, the white guard on the right side by the thickness of the material towards the blade. That's actually just a photo from the uh, bottom on the right side. There you can see uh, the angle. So the wheel on the left, that does the rotation and the wheel on the right, that adjusts the height of the blade. Here one more time, measuring is is really precise. So 0.7 inches material thickness. As you can see now here, I moved the guard exactly uh, 0.7 inches in. I made it a little bit smaller from 15. I did a test cut and you see it perfectly lines up. So the blade right cuts th nearly through that edge. I'm going to do this then multiple times and it's cut. So you see that I do not uh, as adjust the machines per board. I just try to figure out which are the cuts I need to do, kind of like in mass production, and then just do one, one task and cut multiple parts because this way you can prevent any inaccuracies because you even a millimeter in woodworking is a millimeter you will see this later a quick verification are the minor cuts good I use some foam cubes left and right to prop this up and just carefully put the boards in it looks really nice a close-up there you can see that actually uh, top left corner there's a little um, uncut area. I did that on purpose because otherwise the edge might be paper thin and could easily break. Then I do another minor cut 
that's actually for the inside. See, so that's the, the front and then the front cut. Very good. One more test. I want to do also a board that goes into it and then there is the backboard. Now, how do you get all this stuff together? You can use corner clamps to put these parts together. They are very useful. And then, as you can see here, I used brackets to uh, drill these parts together. So a little tip when you want to do this, I used a center punch. And I moved my mouse cursor right to there. So that's where I pushed in a little bit. So then this way you can make it, uh, you screw or you drive the screw right at the center of this opening. Because if the screw moves a little bit, it might then actually also move the bracket and then you start having seams opening, which is really uh, frustrating. If you use the CNC machine, you don't have to do all the stuff. You simply would put it on the CNC and the CNC machine would do the, uh, the cutting and everything for you. Very good, but this was not, not very complicated. You see here, um, besides the, um, the corner brackets, I also used tightening belts to really push everything together at the bottom. That was very, very useful. It's kind of like a um, packing belt. Now I have all corners in there. See the, the top opens a little bit because there's no uh, fastening behind it. Now I just put also a belt uh, up to there. And then I needed to figure out how big is actually the piece that goes in there. So this this board I cut at the end, not at the beginning, because I wasn't sure does maybe dimension why something changed. So be very careful. Don't just cut everything at once when you make your first prototype. Uh, step by step, build your pieces because dimensions might some, sometimes change a little bit. Not much, just a tiny bit. There, look into the bracket. Now, um, I want to have this board perfectly uh, positioned. So you see, I cut myself two wooden slabs. They are 6.5 inches. I put two in. This then really made sure that actually the shelf will be horizontal. And I made a marking on the sides. And here's the marking on the sides, a little bit inwards at the center. That's then uh, a dot I marked and a dot there. This is then where I would take a drill, drill the hole so I could then put the, the wooden dowels in and this way secure everything. Also, when you want to, to cut wooden uh, holes for wooden dowels, either use a drill, drill press so you, your drill holes are really perpendicular to the work surface or you use another guide. I would not suggest to do this freehand because it's very difficult to control making a hole that's really 90 degree down uh, when the outcome later should be that all your joints perfectly match. So you like a, a photo from the, the back. And this is the... Uh, biscuit cutter I showed you. Here one more time. Now um, to secure this shelf I got L brackets. Also there I made a small drawing. I used a center punch to make a depression so it's very easy then to drive a screw in there. Then with a ruler and a 90 degree edge I transferred this over to the other side. Center punch, put a screw in, drill it and then there you are. The, the sides, there I um, did not any markings, but these spacers were very helpful because essentially I put these brackets onto the shelf and then I flipped everything to the side and these uh, spacers held the, the shelf in place. So it was very easy then to simply with a tap uh, and then the driver screw the screws in. Now for the bottom, here you see I drew myself 45 degree lines exactly with the length of the 3D printed socket. 
I also marked uh, a center part because before I continue doing any more complicated joinery work, I just wanted to make a basic 3D printed socket and then glue everything together and then see how this actually would look like. And um, let's take a look at the, the sockets. So here's a 3D printed part for the socket. I see already we are like uh, 11.50, so we have like 10 minutes time. This is all done in Cura. I printed those with various resolutions. These were hollow and they had no openings. So you can see the, the inside, the infill is actually 15%. And then when I wanted to have holes placed in, you see that this part has nothing below, so it properly will fall down. But this is what I want to have. So I needed to increase the infill to 30% and you see how this is nicely gridded up. So then even then here, this part for where the hole would start has actually something to sit on. So when there are questions about how to use this in Cura, I can easily show that people then. Uh, With my students, which was also a very good exercise for them to plan everything out, they actually, as you can see here, created um, drawings onto the wooden board so they can roughly plan out how much lumber they might use. But then I still simply, based on the dimensions they had, started cutting all these individual parts more based on measurements and not necessarily based on on the lines. So here we just put the, the part in, started cutting it down and as you can see there then I made a small strip for it. The students pretty much enjoyed it. Shaper was actually pretty good for them um, because they always could easily go back, take measurements, take a look at the stuff because uh, if you have hand drawings you might do a wrong drawing but if you have a cat model you can just if I go to to shaper for the moment I could just go ahead and simply say well class ask me how long is this edge I don't recall I can click it oh at the bottom it tells me this is 15 inches by 15 inches and this one is 12 by 15 so that was a really very very helpful part of Shaper inside this exercise. Oh, and then I use bandsaws and all the different um, tools to cut everything. I have here uh, a nice video for cutting multiples. So you will see here she has multiple parts drawn on. We quickly uh, did a verification for the measurements and also the, the amount. No, this is actually the, the wood sheet she wants to cut. And I didn't really trust that the edges are perpendicular. So I started cutting new edges along the rib guard. So it's like one side and I just tried to look is this cut clean or maybe still a little bit wobbly? You know, you see, I, I moved the guard a tick. Now I'm rotating the board. Now with the freshly cut edge, I go along the fence, cut the, the uncut edge. And this way I alternate one, two times and then start straightening the edges. And with this technique, then I, I got very clean parallel cuts on each side to the dimension that I needed it to be. So I'm moving a little bit in one more time. Okay. Now we need to make multiples. So you see now there I bring in place the um, miter guard. So 
set the dimension for the distance I need. But I want to make sure that this one edge actually is correct. So you see I switched this position of the guard and I will just trim off this one end because now I have three edges that are perfectly 90 degrees. And then by using both guards, the rip fence and the miter guard, I can quickly cut the four parts she needs and they're all exactly to the same dimension. Oh, one more time, and one more time, and one more time. So actually, they went pretty fast. Now, here some more photos of the group where we looked at all these individual parts. So they all actually had a pretty good time transferring the stuff from shaper onto the wood, and then cutting and everything. And here you can see they already were sourcing then glides which should go into the the box because she wants to build uh, a drawer that goes in there. So after you created then this final part, now this is a prototype, you want let's say order 10 copies. How do you get this actually to uh, a factory or a local wood shop. There are two ways how you can do this. If this is not very complicated, let me go to the shaper folder so I can show you all the different parts I have there. We can either share the step file with them or we can create a construction document for them. So I have a step file that's assembled and step file that is unfolded. So what does that mean? Let's go back to, to QuickTime.